Our next esteemed guest is Mr. Craig Murray, who's a parliamentary candidate and has also been a former ambassador. Mr. Craig Murray. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, wonderful to be back here in Blackburn. And I am deeply honoured to have been asked to stand for Parliament again here in Blackburn and Darwin, to have been asked by Blackburn's independent candidates, councillors, to be asked by the Workers' Party of Great Britain. And we are going to give it one hell of a honour at getting elected here in Blackburn. I stood for election here in 2005 against Jack Straw. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that at the end of this speech. Uh, and at the start, I'd also like to say that we've heard three magnificent speeches, and I've, it very seldom happens uh, that I sat there and I think I agreed with every single word every one of the speakers said. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Forgive me. I won't actually repeat all those points, although they were very good. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things in my personal experience that no one else can talk about because it's my experience and give you a few thoughts. I was there in the International Court of Justice in The Hague for the genocide case between South Africa and Israel. I was present in the courtroom. There were only 14 seats in the public gallery. I had to start queuing at 2 o'clock in the morning in minus 7 degrees centigrade in The Hague in February in order to get one of those 14 seats. At 4.30 a.m., still in minus 7 degrees centigrade, I was joined in a queue by my friend Jeremy Corbyn, who also queued in the early hours of the morning in the freezing cold. And Jeremy is even older than I am. Uh, so that was uh, a feat, a real feat. And we sat there and we listened to the South Africans on the first day outline the most compelling case. Now it's true, there is nobody in the entire world who does not know that genocide is happening in Gaza. It is as plain as your face. Everybody has seen the evidence. There are people who, for political reasons, seek to deny it, but that doesn't mean they don't know it's happening. Everybody knows it's happening. And the South African lawyers, or the lawyers on behalf of South Africa, outlined in detail after detail the facts of the genocide. Over 750,000 homes destroyed. Over 10,000 children killed. More by now. The maimings. The deaths in pregnancy. The killings of doctors, of aid workers, of lawyers, of university professors. The incredible percentage of children killed in the conflict. Approximately 40% of all the people killed by Israel have been children. That's just not normal in war. War, of course, is not normal. But that's not normal in war. In almost every genuine war, genuine armed conflict, the death rate of children killed is between 8 and 10 percent. I, I, I cannot find any example of any conflict in recent history where 40 percent of those killed has been children. That is the plainest indication this is not a war, this is a genocide, a killing of a people. We listened to this, outlined brilliantly by the South African lawyers, and on the second day, we listened to the Israeli lawyers. And it was astonishing to be there. They lied, and they lied, and they lied. Let me tell you some of the things they said. They said the reason that so many children were killed was that Hamas employs child soldiers. They said that the reason that so many homes were destroyed were these were booby-trapped by Hamas 
or were misfires of Hamas rockets. They said that more aid trucks were now entering Gaza than the volume that used to enter before October the 7th. And they said that every single hospital in Gaza was a Hamas military base. And those lawyers stood there and said those things. And it occurred to me, everybody in that room, including the people saying those things, knew those things were not true. Everybody knew those are lies, including the lawyers making the lies, including the agents of the Israeli government sitting behind them. And they were telling lie after lie after lie, and the judges knew they were lies. The judges definitely knew they were lies. And they were telling the lies to justify the killing of children, to enable the killing of children to continue. And I sat there and I thought, I am in the presence of evil. That was the presence of evil. How anybody can do that, can try to continue a genocide, try to continue the killing of children, and try to justify it by standing before the highest court in the world and telling lie after lie. And that is why we are in a situation where there is no two-state solution. Israel is not a genuine political entity. Israel is a terrorist entity spreading evil in the world. On the 16th of October, um, I was flying back from a WikiLeaks meeting in Reykjavik. Um, and I was detained at Glasgow Airport under the counter-terrorism law. I was detained under the Terror Act. I was told by the police that I was not entitled to a lawyer under the Terror Act, that I, had, I was not entitled to remain silent. I had to answer all questions. I had to give them my laptop and my mobile phone, and I had to give them uh, all the passwords for my devices, and that failure to do that was in itself an offence under the Terror Act carrying two years' imprisonment. I have never had any connection with violence in my entire life, or any connection with terrorism. I'm a former British ambassador and the former rector of a university. And here I was, being questioned under the Terrorism Act. And I was asked why I supported Palestine. I was asked why I had attended a demonstration on Palestine in Iceland. And I was asked, actually they asked me what was said on the demonstration for Palestine in Iceland, and I replied, I have no idea, I don't speak Icelandic. But they, um, I was asked if I would ever attend more demonstrations on Palestine, and I said, I most certainly will. <laughs> they kept my devices. They told me I was under investigation under the Terrorism Act. And apparently I still am under investigation under the Terrorism Act. And the reason I'm under investigation under the Terrorism Act is that I have said, as a former senior diplomat, as a former ambassador, I am telling you it is a simple truth in international law that an occupied people have the right of armed resistance. Now, I stood here for election against Jack Straw in 2005. And I stood because I had recently resigned from the Foreign Office. He used to be my boss. And I'd resigned over the issue of torture and extraordinary rendition, where Muslims were being sent. <laughs> Muslims were being sent all around the world, including to Uzbekistan, where I was ambassador, 
in order for them to be tortured on behalf of the CIA and with MI6 involvement. And I knew that Jack Straw knew because I had told him personally, I had reported this back to him. And I was told at that time that it was not illegal for Britain to get intelligence from torture. And I also knew, because I knew of many of the cases, that the majority, the large majority of the Muslims who were being taken around the world and tortured were entirely innocent and were being tortured to get false confessions. I also knew, because I used to be the head of the Foreign Office section of the Embargo Surveillance Center, uh, which and my job was 24 hours a day to look at Iraqi weapons procurement. I also knew for a fact that there were no Iraqi weapons of mass destruction, and I knew for a fact that Jack Straw and Tony Blair knew that, and that the Iraq war was based entirely on lies. And that's why I stood here in Blackburn to tell the people of Blackburn that and to challenge him. And I did that. I came here, and we had a three-month campaign in which I did that, and in, since Gaza happened and since I've declared I'm standing here in Blackburn again, I have had dozens of people, dozens of people come up to me and tell me how guilty they feel that they didn't vote for me, but they voted for Jack Straw. And what I say to them is this, do not feel guilty. Jack Straw was known in this community, and this community had memories of the time when the Labour Party did stand for working people. And at that time, he said I was lying about torture and extraordinary rendition. And in early 2005, it hadn't yet been proven. I understand that people believed him and did not believe me. But there is nobody in the whole world now who does not know I was telling the truth about torture and extraordinary rendition. <laughs> and that Jack Straw was a supporter of the torture of Muslims and a bare-faced liar. <laughs> and I say to you this, please nobody feel guilty for not voting for me last time. But you'd better vote for me this time, because now you know. Now you know about Gaza. Now you know that the Labour Party has not only opposed a ceasefire, the Labour Party still, to this day, is supporting British arms exports to Israel. All arms exports to Israel must be stopped. We are at a turning point. Yesterday, Keir Starmer announced that the Labour Party will increase defence spending to 2.5% of GDP. That's a 25% increase in defence spending. Yet they tell us there's no money for an incoming Labour government to improve hospitals or schools. They tell us we need more privatisation in the health service. They tell us that austerity, Tory austerity, has to continue. The Labour Party has abandoned the people. It is time for the people to abandon the Labour Party. Thank you very much.